Hello and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. This is our 51st episode and today we have a very honored guest and her dog. And this is remarkably a wonderful event for me because I started my journey in dogs in 1980, but before that, I tried to buy a Sealy Ham Terrier and was unable to locate one at the time. So I moved on to other breeds and became pretty well known as an owner and handler and uh, later a judge of Kerry Blue Terriers. But I've always, in the back of my mind, loved the Sealing Ham Terrier. Today we have Karen Taylor and we are very honored to have you all the way from Connecticut. Uh, and you, Bailey, yeah. tell us about your love and your passion for Sealies. Well, I always have. You can look at this little picture here. That's me at the age of two with a Sealy Ham. So they've always been a part of my life. Um, this is Bailey. He will be three years old on Saturday. He's very excited to be here. Happy birthday, Bailey. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, stay, relax. Uh, Tell us about the history of the, the Sealy. Sure. My grandparents started with, their first one was in 1929. And uh, they got that one from some people who said they just couldn't manage the dog. And of course, if you really love dogs, you can easily love them and they are very, very trainable. This little boy is very well behaved. One of the pluses of the breed is that they don't really shed. And a lot of people avoid breeds that do shed because there's a lot of work with them. But um, my grandparents started with this breed back in the late 1920s. And by the 1930s, they had truly fallen in love with the breed and decided that they wanted to breed it and show them and raise them. And um, this is what they eventually did. Uh, my grandfather uh, learned a great deal. He was a high school teacher at the time and uh, therefore believed in studying and he studied the breed in depth and uh, started showing it and eventually became a Sealy Ham uh, Terrier judge and continued. Your grandfather became quite an internationally acclaimed judge. Yes, that he did. Um, his last show was the 1968 Westminster Dog Show at Madison Square Garden and um, he did all breeds at that point and um, I spent my childhood every summer going with my grandparents up to the Catskills where they kept the dogs in the summertime in the kennels and I had the privilege of working with my grandparents on taking care of them and changing their uh, crates and, and uh, pens for uh, every day and putting them out. But I was also allowed to take them out and play with them on the property at will. And some of the happiest moments of my childhood was being with my grandparents and the dogs. This is a picture of my grandmother is uh, from a show in 1959. And um, then here is another picture of my grandparents with two dogs that are obviously being prepared for a show. And here is another picture, larger, maybe a little bit easier for the viewers to see of my grandmother holding a dog for show. This is a beautiful photo of the Sealy. Yes, it is. It's a beautiful 
beautiful breed. This is how. Why is this breed so un relatively unknown? Oh, I really do not know because it is such a charming, friendly, family oriented dog. Uh, they can play hard with children. Uh, as mine have played with my grandchildren now. Um, and yet they're also wonderful at just hanging out on the couch and being a couch potato. Um, and uh, Yet, unfortunately, there are so many people who know nothing about this breed. Yes, and it's a shame because it is a, uh, a breed of note and has value. It was uh, begun in Wales as um, by a uh, Lord uh, Sealyham, that was his estate in Wales, and he wanted to have a dog that could go to ground with the vermin and it could go after badgers. So you know that it is a strong dog that can, is not afraid. Um, and um, they bred them, of course, to be white so that they wouldn't be mistaken to be their prey when the hunters went out with them. Um, they, they're just uh, a very well-behaved breed. Although I'll have to say right now, Bailey is very excited about being here <laughs> and can't seem to sit still, which is so rare for him. Um, but this is a big deal to be on TV. <laughs> he is certainly a handsome dog. Well, thank you. I'm very this partial. This is considered by dog fanciers to be a legacy breed or one that is in jeopardy of possible extinction. God forbid, um, because they are so worth the effort and the time. Um, and uh, as I said, such a wonderful pet, a very wonderful family dog. Um, it has amazing show quality, and it always is, there's always at least one at the Westminster Dog Show every year, uh, brought by Marjorie Good. A good friend of mine, and Marjorie is a lovely person. <laughs> yes, and it was her male that was ba is Bailey's father. Um, actually, all the Sealy hams that I have had over the last 20 or so years have been sired by one of uh, Marjorie's dogs. I think we're going to give Bailey a treat. That might be a good idea. I think at this point, <laughs> we're going to give Bailey a treat. Little tidbit this afternoon. There you go. <laughs> did you get it? Good. Yes, he did. Very sure. good. <laughs> in my work, in my research for this show and for others, I am finding that many... Uh, of the lesser known breeds are coming back, uh, they're making a comeback in Europe. Yes, there's quite a few breeders of Sealy hens in Europe. Uh, the, uh, the breeder of Bailey's mother is uh, in Sweden and she has beautiful litters and just recently had a new one. Uh, so if you really want to pursue... And someone <laughs> sent me a video this weekend that I was mesmerized by the, uh, the vi on the video uh, of the very... Uh, the Sealies were phenomenal, and they had some beautiful dandies and some of the other rarer, what we consider in this country to be rarer breeds, mm -hmm. but they were v outstanding specimens. Yes, I'm sure they were. Um, there seems to be a lot of interest in Poland and in the, the Baltic countries. Mm hmm mm hmm Very nice. <laughs> yes, well, uh, I have also, I brought a couple of ribbons from the one that was my champion, 
uh, a while back, back in the early 2000s. That particular one is uh, when he won the sweeps, the national sweeps. At Montgomery County. This is a priceless artifact. Yes, it is. I'm very proud of it. And uh, you should be rightfully so. <laughs> A win at Montgomery, any win at Montgomery is great. I treasured the ribbon I got one year. <laughs> but to get a best in sweeps at Montgomery is considered the cream of the crop. Yes, yes, it's uh, a treasured uh, item for me. Uh, here is a, I think I showed this picture of my grandmother showing a dog. Um, but I also brought... Uh, two pictures of my grandfather as a judge. And here he is judging a Scotty, not a Sealyham. And here he is judging uh, a Sealyham, best of breed or best of variety, which this is a beautiful specimen. He really is. You can tell it's a male because he's got such presence in that photo. And then these two photographs, um, these are true treasures that come from my grandparents. They were taken by a photographer who was a bit of a snob in the dog world. Um, what a classic photo. Yes. But this photographer would only take pictures of dogs that he felt were worthy of his camera. And he was very uh, well known in the dog world. He took pictures of other, other breeds beside Sealy Hams. Um, and unfortunately, all of his studio work and negatives and so forth were lost in a fire. So that anybody has a picture that has survived that fire, and these were given to my grandparents prior to the fire, uh, this is um, a very special these item. These are classics. To, oh, yes, yes. And you can see what, what is so wonderful about the breed. And the breed, the one that I had that uh, eventually got his championship looked very much like this. I had asked mm -hmm. Patsy Woods, to, who was a very well-known breeder and, and Sealyham Terrier person, I told her I wanted... She was a lovely, lovely lady. Yes. We lost her too soon as far as I'm concerned. Um, I still miss her. But I said to her I wanted to have a dog that I could show and obtain a championship. I wanted to have a championship underneath my belt. And I said, but I don't want it to look like so many of the Sealies. They're starting to get a little bit fancy. And I said, I want the good old fashioned Sealy. That, and the one that I got, that she got for me, looks just like these two. And everywhere we went, he won ribbons everywhere. He had his major in less than a year and, um, and his championship. And uh, I didn't bring a picture of him, but I felt that these two were certainly more important. You know, I, I feel very lucky and very blessed that 40 years ago when I started in dogs, there were so many good people, outstanding breeders that were still out there every weekend showing dogs and exhibiting and I was able to learn from so many outstanding, outstanding breeders. And, many, and the thing I was saying to someone the other night is, in those days, 40 years ago, you went to a show, you stayed for the day. Oh, yes. It wasn't wham, bam, and go home. No. You stayed for the day and you learned. Mm -hmm. And you studied the breeds. Yes. Very much so. I remember doing that. Um, and because of my love of dogs, 
I could go around in the grooming tents and say, I'll have one of those and one of this, and yes, I'll take one of those as well. <laughs> but people would, you would just stand there and learn from these people, mm -hmm. and they would be very willing to share their knowledge. Yes. Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Marjorie and I discussed carries when I had carries. And, um, and of course, I was looking at the Sealies, uh, but uh, these people were very, very willing to share their knowledge. Before I got my dog that I ended up showing... I'm ready to take him home, by the way. <laughs> no, he's kind of attached to me. But I remember going to a show, and I believe it was in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I saw a Sealy being groomed, a... Uh, quite a ways away from me, and I walked over and I said, I had sealies that were my grandparents when I was growing up. I just have to see this one. And it was Peter Green, who is a very well-known breeder and judge still today. And he gave me all the time as if I was the only person that was important aside from the dog that he was grooming. And uh, it just made me feel that that was also representative of the breed, was the handlers and the breeders, that um, they wanted you to learn about their breed and learn to love and they it. they cared about the knowledge that they were sharing. Yes, yes, it was, uh, it was very educational. Even though I grew up with them, a lot of what I did as I was a child with my grandparents was just loving the dogs. And um, it was through showing my own that I learned so much more about their points and, and how they should, where their strengths are, uh, and, um, and the beauty, the beauty of the breed. They're wonderful. Peter, were, Peter is still showing. Yes, he was judging at, at Westminster this year. And does a good job. My mother loved Peter. <laughs> they had many, many wonderful conversations together. Mm -hmm. I learned a great deal over the years from Anna Catherine Nicholas. Mm -hmm. Anna was great. I had the opportunity when I first got uh, Bailey, I took him up to Rhode Island to Jeff Dawson who's a Who handler. is still a very good friend of mine. Yes, and I gave Bailey to him for a couple of weeks to study him and see if he had potential as a show dog. And that was before I decided that I was just going to have him as a pet. Um, and he said that uh, Bailey definitely had potential for the ring. Uh, but as I said, uh, I'm strictly in love with this boy as a pet because <laughs> he is my baby. Talk about their longevity. Yes, they do. The breed's longevity. It, it does uh, live quite some time. Um, mine have lived up to the age of 16. Um, I remember some of the ones that my grandparents had lived longer. Uh, than that. Um, I think it's time for ba another uh, treat. For, uh, another treat <laughs> for Bailey. Yes, Bailey. Treats are coming. Yes. Okay, you have to be a good boy. Be a good boy now. There you go. Oh, that one, was another so one. good. All right, one more. Look at that intent expression. <laughs> there you go. It's like a carpet sweeper. Oh, yes. Yes, he doesn't miss a meal. <laughs> Anybody's. So talk about their longevity. <laughs> yes, well, uh, they usually live anywhere from 12 to 16 years and uh, are very playful for a number of years. Um, I've, uh, I, I really don't know much more than that to say. What about his daily routine? Ah, uh, well, his day starts early in the morning. We 
get up together and the first thing we do is go out for a long walk. And uh, he's spent the night in his crate, um, which he loves. He has his pillow. He also has a little blanket that um, he's had since puppyhood. And um, we go for a long walk and then we come back and mommy has breakfast and he always helps mommy make sure that everything on the plate is eaten. Um, he likes sausage in the morning. And, Smart guy. And uh, he also loves eggs. Um, and um, he also enjoys little tidbits from daddy's plate. Um, as I say, he never misses a meal, anybody's. Uh, and uh, then he usually takes his morning nap. And then we usually take another long walk around 2 o'clock. And um, again, the exercise is important for him. They do like exercise. They, though they can be a couch potato, they do like to get out and explore the world. Um, he's also capable of playing with other dogs. He has a couple of dog friends. Um, one is a <clears throat> Chahula leopard, which is a very unusual dog to imagine a Sealyham playing with, but um, he's a, a game little fellow for uh, tugging rope and, and tumbling and running with uh, dogs that have so much more appearance in size and uh, history. Um, and, uh, but he's very game to join them all. What about his grooming? Well, I groom him myself. Um, I'm not as efficient as Marjorie or Leslie and some of the other well-known groomers. Um, but again, because he's a pet, um, we're, we're learning together. Um, when they're being prepared for a show, they have, their coat has to be stripped. And that can be a very time-consuming and important talent that um, Leslie does a beautiful job with his brother who is uh, being shown. Um, but uh, he also has a very strong coat in that it does not uh, get dirty easily. It's uh, very, um, excuse me, um, it's very hardy in that it can take the weather. Um, it doesn't. They have a weather-resistant coat, don't very they? Very much so, and he doesn't isn't bothered by the rain. Uh, he thinks snow was invented strictly for his pleasure. He loves to roll in the snow and tunnel through it and um, enjoy it. Winters are, I think, one of his favorite seasons because he can go out there and and just roll and and hop and. Uh, play in the He likes in the to show. have fun. Yes, they they do like to have fun. And they're wonderful with children. Um, they they love children. Um, all I have seven grandchildren and um, when any of them walk through the door, he is so excited and uh, his tail is going and he dances in circles and around them and can't wait to play ball with them. Uh, one of my grandchildren loves to take a, a throw and put it over her body on the floor and then she pretends to growl and uh, Bailey tries to get under that blanket and find her and the whole time his little tail is going and and he's almost laughing that, uh, you know, he says, I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. And he loves to play hide and seek with the children. Loves that. Um, and uh, as I said, they're just a wonderful family dog. Uh, I think every family should have one. And certainly there aren't enough people out there 
enjoying this breed that really could find. How can more people find, get information about this breed and, and, and find it? Well, you, when I started looking, um, at long after my parents, grandparents had passed away, I went to the Who's Who book in the library and I found the um, president of the club and I contacted him. And uh, also you can go on the internet to the American Sealyham Terrier Club and there you will get a lot of information about the breed as well as the breeders and when they may have a, a litter that will be available soon. Um, and uh, the only contingency that is required because it's a purebred uh, and a legacy breed is that should you choose to have one, you must be sponsored by two people. Uh, so, so I wouldn't qualify, wouldn't I? Yes, you would, because I'd be more than happy to sponsor you. And I've known Marjorie <laughs> for many years. Yes, I'd I get in. I think you're a shoe in. <laughs> <laughs> I really they do. Are beautiful. Well, even I had to, when I decided to get my first one, I had to go through the rigmarole of being approved. I had to Is accept... it an expensive breed to purchase? Well, I'm not sure that I would say that it is the most expensive, but uh, the prices usually range between two and $3,000. Um, there are certainly breeds that you would pay a great deal more than that. Of course. Um, and uh, it's possible that you might be able to get one on the low end uh, if it's maybe the runt of a litter that doesn't have any potential for okay. breeding. Very good. So, well, he's finally... They are what? He's calming down. Yes, he's finally he's, getting used to being on television. <laughs> and he's doing a very good job, and he's giving Mommy kisses. Mm, mommy loves his kisses. <laughs> I get lots of them at night when we sit on the couch and watch TV and cuddle together, which we do every night. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> it's a good boy. What about his veterinary care? Uh, I do have him go to a vet at least once a year, and um, I have a, actually a vet in Old Saybrook, Connecticut, that was recommended to me by uh, show people, and um, it, he uh, does a very good job of keeping him healthy, and we do take the flea and tick and the, uh, uh, the other medicines required. Otherwise, he's very healthy. It's a healthy breed, and they don't really have uh, some of the diseases uh, that other breeds, purebreds, have. Unfortunately, I am being told that the show is coming to an end. Well, we've had a wonderful we time. We have thoroughly enjoyed visiting with Bailey. Well, thank you. We've enjoyed and being Karen, here, too. it was a pleasure. Thanks We're so gonna much. We're going to have to do this again. Sure, anytime. What a wonderful introduction to one of a breed that I've owned or wanted to own for more than 40 years. And one that's been in my life for over 70. <laughs> thank you very much for having us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us come up from Connecticut and uh, my grandchildren are looking forward to seeing this show. On fur, <laughs> fins, and feathers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.